Yeah, it's been a fascinating year. Uh, the first uh, event was actually the May making ceremony in Guildhall. And I said during the course of that evening, it feels as if I'm beginning a marathon. And I just hope I can pace myself and get to the end. So with nine months gone and three to go, I'm sort of, you can see the sort of the finishing tape. I was asked by the former Mayor Ali Nenny to hand the chain back. And that was a fortnight into the position. And that was because it was an evening of presenting uh, some funding to various charities. Uh, there is a Mayor's Fundraising Charity Committee. And during the course of the year, they collect money. And then the highlight of the year is then to distribute that money amongst various local charities. So because it had been Arlene's year, uh, he wanted the chain back in order to be a part of that evening. And I was glad to be there, just to sit at the back and to watch it. And I was absolutely amazed at the number of worthy charities and causes in Carmarthen. And people doing their work very quietly, no fuss, wanting no favour or praise, but just happy to help others less fortunate. Uh, some of them, for example, there was a charity called uh, Fresh Start that I'd never heard of. And uh, they were trying to explain what they do is, plus somebody has been homeless, so they give them a the flat. Uh, so you go into this flat, but then you take it for granted. It's going to have furniture and bedding and utensils in the kitchen. So that isn't the case. So this particular charity, which is called Fresh Tart Start, and it's actually uh, supported by the English Baptist Church in Lama Street. It's one of their charities. Uh, so they provide all the different uh, utensils and equipment you need in the flat. I'm originally from Newcastle, Emlyn, but my wife Tina's from Carmarthen. So I'm, if anything, I'm probably more pleased for her as someone who's born and been brought up in Carmarthen. I'm just pleased for her that she's had the role of mayoress. And uh, it's been good to go to different events with her and for her to be a part of, of this incredible uh, experience. Well, just for example, the day before yesterday, uh, we were invited down to be judges. Uh, we've all heard of Strictly Come Dancing. Well, there is a, a version of that for disabled adults. Um, so there was a function here in Carmarthen uh, this week uh, where there were two categories, uh, young adults who were dancing who are wheelchair bound and young adults who are not wheelchair bound. Those are the two categories. And it was a fantastic occasion. Uh, we were there with on a panel of four judges and we were just making comments after every dance. And then we had the difficult task of actually awarding winners uh, because the two winners in the categories won't go forward then to the final in North Wales and can add one in, in next month. So um, that was great. And it was great to support uh, disabled adults. And they were, they were, they, it was just such an enjoyable occasion. Well, uh, one of our main objectives in the next three months is to make sure we do have facilities for disabled in our, in our parks and uh, we've actually just had a tender. Uh, we've, uh, we're going to put uh, some facilities in Johnston Park. I'm hoping that's going to take place before the end of May. Um, so that's certainly going to happen. Uh, I've also got a meeting next week with some representatives from the Women's Institute. Uh, they're very keen to improve Carmarthen. And one of our joint uh, ambitions is to have more trees around Carmarthen. And in fact, the first part of that process is to have actually plant an oak tree. We know the, uh, the legend of Merlin and the oak. Um, so we are looking out to actually put a new oak tree, to plant an oak tree, probably in Knott Square. Uh, we've, had, we've had one uh, walk around town to see where we can put it. The great thing about Carmarthen is that even though it's an historic town in itself and there's lots to see around the town and there's a lot of history here, it's also very central to a number of other interesting places. You've got Larne with an easy access, uh, obviously that's an historic town. Uh, you've got Llan Stefan, you've got all numerous castles, you've got Drustlin Castle, Cary Kennet Castle. Uh, you've got sort of wealth of countryside, you've got a wealth of coastal areas some lovely beaches, um, in fact, some fantastic beaches, you know, we, better to none. You'd be hard pressed to find anywhere in the world to match some of, some of the scenery we've got in West Wales. And Carmarthen is just so central to all of them. You can get to all of those very, very quickly. Very recently, we, we, we used to recognise some of the sports people in Carmarthen. So we had a, a sort of a, an award-winning evening to recognise people who have achieved in sports and the person who had the Lifetime Achievement Award was Roy Burgess. 
uh, former Llanelli Wales and British Lion. So uh, I said when I introduced him that he was one of Carmarthen's legends and uh, not just the fact that he's represented Wales and the British Lions but also he's an ambassador for the town and uh, he hasn't just let, rested on his laurels, uh, he's also continued to give that opportunity to young players. So he's very focal to the Carmarthen District Rugby under Lems team and under 15s and there's all the organisation to ensure that those young people have an opportunity in the same way as he had an opportunity. The, the legend of the Merlin, of course, is to do with the, the oak tree, and if the oak tree was disappeared, then Carmarthen would drown. Well, we are, unfortunately, we've had some really serious flooding in the last few months, back in November. Uh, so that, that sort of uh, legend almost came true at one time. It, it looked quite, quite dire and serious. One of the great honours of being me is that I'm also Admiral of the Port and there's a huge history to Carmarthen as a port, as, a, as part of the, uh, of the experience of Carmarthen growing as a town. Uh, all the trade came up the river and that's, that was the hub of the town in those days. Um, and one of the first functions that I attended in June, last June, uh, as part of my responsibility was to go down the river. Uh, we had a flotilla of boats leaving Carmarthen, Quayside, and going down Ferryside, and that was a great and um, fantastic experience. And you could just feel the history as you went down the river, and you could just visualise you know, how it used to be several hundred years ago, with all the, the sort of the vibrancy of uh, everything coming up and down the river. And uh, so that was great to be a part of that experience. And to also recognise that even though that's historical in a sense, and a tradition as part of the mayor's role, uh, but I'm also keen to support the, the, the current organisations that utilise the river and we're trying to keep it alive. And uh, focal to that is the Coracle, uh, the Netsman Association. And obviously uh, Coracles uh, are an integral part of the history of Carmarthen and Coracle fishing. And that's how some individuals made their livelihood. Sadly over the years that has now depleted. I think we are now down to eight licences. And even those uh, individuals are under pressure um, to maintain uh, what they want to do. Uh, there's a, going to be possible restrictions for their activities in the future. Uh, and it's important that we protect some of these traditions. It's an important part of the culture of Carmarthen. And it identifies us as being apart from other cultures. Uh, so I'm very keen to support them. And also, as well as the traditional elements of uh, riverside activities, we've also got other important initiatives. Uh, we've got the Carmarthen Water Safety, Safety Partnership uh, that was established uh, following the tragic death of a local youngster and the recognition that we need to make uh, water and anybody using the water make them aware of the dangers, particularly young people. And uh, I remember somebody telling me years ago that the, the, the river takes one life every year and sadly that is the case. So I think the more we can do to educate everybody, especially young people, uh, to keep themselves safe when they're down with the river, uh, then that is also vitally important. And there are other people using the river as well. There's the uh, canoeists, there's the Gwendraith Valley Paddlers, uh, there are the Tawi Boat Club. So lots of important initiatives taking place still around the river. Well, one of the most significant uh, artefacts, I suppose, would be the sword presented by Henry VIII. Uh, he recognised the support that he had uh, from this part of Wales when he was uh, fighting against other armies. So he did actually give uh, a sword to Carmarthen and that's uh, one of the important artefacts within the Mayor's Parlour. I suppose I'm wearing the Mayor's chain, which is quite historic. Uh, it's got three words on it actually, uh, which is Choydiant, Heath and Rhaddid. So, freedom, peace and prosperity. We are twins, have been since 92 with uh, Les Navarre in Brittany. And I went across to the first ceremony in 1982 and it was a great experience, a great welcome. And subsequently every year, uh, Brittany came over to us and then we go over to Les Navarre. And this last year, when I'd just been mayor for a couple of months, I actually went over to Brittany not a great welcome with the people over there and it was good to uh, consolidate that friendship. The another part of the history of Carmarthen is, is the cycle track. Uh, that was one of the main cycle tracks in Wales back in the early 1900s and there were fantastic events there with hundreds of people turning up to support. 
And in the last year, we've actually refurbished uh, that cycle track. It's now a velodrome with a purpose-built surface. And uh, we've got other cycling clubs using it, including Tawi Riders, the local club, as well as other clubs like Binya and Kinehi. So it's great, again, to see that park being used and uh, to have young people having the opportunity to, to use a new velodrome. Yes, I'm up now to my last few months in office and uh, so there's uh, what was a 12 month horizon has become a three month horizon, so it's getting closer. And as the former mayor said, when he was coming to an end, he was soon to be yesterday's man. So that now is uh, coming closer, uh, but obviously it's, uh, I'm gonna try and make the most of the, of the, the next three months try and contribute as much as I can. And then I'll be continuing on the town council. I will support to the best of my ability the new mayor uh, and ensure that he has a successful, he or she has a successful year. Uh, and there are so many other things that we need to do to, to improve Carmarthen, to make it an even better place than it is, to make it a safe place and to make it a healthy place. I've seen